This is a short uh, five minute video just summarising the uh, work that was published in a paper back in two, uh, 2015. Um, the work was led primarily by one of my students, uh, Matt Keir, um, and it was done in collaboration with uh, Rob Ellis from Crossflow Energy Company and uh, Dr Sam Rowland, a colleague of mine uh, here at Swansea University. Uh, essentially what we were trying to do in this project uh, was develop a parameterization and optimization scheme for the blade shape of vertical wind axis, uh, vertical axis wind turbines. Uh, the work was published uh, in Applied Mathematical Modeling, uh, as I said, back in 2015. So the uh, the wind turbine that we were applying this to um, had a novel design um, incorporating uh, a shield or a shroud to protect, protect the returning blades, um, the kind of the, the, the traveling upstream blades uh, from the flow direction. And uh, the idea was to take advantage of both lift and drag on the blades. So to come up with, uh, so we wanted to come up with a hybrid design for the blade. Uh, so something that sat between your classic airfoil shape taking advantage of lift or the kind of cup shape for drag based um, wind turbines. Um, so we're looking for the optimal hybrid blade design. I guess one of the most novel things uh, in the paper was the method we used to parameterize this blade shape. Um, we spent a lot of time looking at different options for the parameterization and trying to come up with a flexible design parameterization um, with as, as limited number of design variables as possible. In the end, uh, this was the scheme we came up with. Of course, more details are available in the paper uh, where the primary design parameters are the radius of the outer arc uh, of the blade, uh, the thickness of the blade at three particular points along that arc, uh, the angle um, of the, the blade relative to the flow direction, um, and, I, and the, the size of the, uh, the outer arc uh, that's used. So those were the design variables used in the optimization study, which, which uh, which is the, the main bulk of the paper. The CFD method we used um, was a fairly standard Navier-Stokes uh, based finite volume CFD solver. All the meshing was done using FEMGV um, and the moving geometry, the moving mesh was implemented using a click gap method. Uh, the red arrows uh, on this figure show where that um, click gap was positioned. So everything inside that click gap uh, was rotating to model the, uh, the rotation of the, the, the wind turbine itself. And you can see the shroud uh, at the top there. Typical simulations uh, to get down to a quasi steady state uh, which would allow us to extract the power coefficient of the turbine would take about eight hours of runtime on across eight cores of a PC cluster and all of this was done in, in kind of quasi 2D uh, modeling. So here's the wider domain um, of the problem that was studied with the, where the device is positioned. As I mentioned the thing that we wanted out of this to optimize was the power of the turbine um, and we specified the power output from the turbine in terms of a power coefficient defined as the actual power out, so that's the, the total torque times by the rotational speed of the turbine, uh, normalized by the maximum theoretical power um, available from the turbine. So typical CFD, a single CFD simulation response would look something like this, uh, whereas after a given number of iterations or time steps, uh, the the, the torque response settles down to some quasi steady state value which allows us to read a mean uh, power output. Initially uh, the design space uh, based on those six variables was sampled using Latin hypercube sampling just to get a feel for how important each of the variables were and whether in fact it was important to keep all of those six variables in the final optimization study. Uh, and I guess the really interesting thing in this paper then is, is the application of an optimizer, we used a, a quasi gradient based uh, optimizer uh, called Nelda Mead um, to find the optimum combination of those six design variables to maximize the power output. Um, and the, the optimization run or the, the change in or increase in power from the optimization is shown in the bottom right figure there. We actually managed to get a 23% improvement on uh, over the baseline case uh, that was the starting point for this design. So the final design ended up looking something like this. Um, I guess what we've got is a, a sensible merging between an airfoil type shape and a cup type shape to, to get the right compromise, the right balance between drag 
um, and lift uh, phenomena. So again, if you want more details on this, uh, the paper was published back in 2015. It's in Applied Mathematical Modeling.